Back in the days of COVID lockdown, residents were allowed to exercise in their local council area. For Steve Anion Smith and friends, this included a couple of national parks, with Heathcote National Park being one of them. It's a bit less than 3,000 hectares of forest and woodland, a bit of heath and a few first swamps and things. Um, Crofty was, David Croft was telling me that um, parks get got a couple of koala sightings a year, although there would have been plenty of unreported sightings. And one of the problems with sightings of anything is they tend to be biased to where people are. So many of the sightings were near urban interfaces because that's where people are more likely to see them, particularly with things like noisy miners and cockatoos and dogs and whatever reacting to their presence as they sit in the lemon tree or whatever it is that they happen to find themselves perched in. I'm not aware that there are any documented breeding records for koalas in Heathcote. Um, a recent report by Parks at a Biodiversity Researcher doing a broad acre research um, task, so it wasn't just looking for koalas, but he'd come to the conclusion that they're an uncommon visitor from Holsworthy. On an outing to look at an Aboriginal site in Heathcote, they decided to also look for koalas. Typically cryptic, koalas are known to sleep in trees, often high up, for 20 hours a day or so, and are mainly active at night. they can be located by looking for signs, such as scratch marks on their favourite food trees. These are often grey gums, Eucalyptus punctata. Another sign is droppings beneath both food trees and resting trees, which may be quite varied. As we all know, they mainly eat eucalyptus leaves, but they can eat a wide range of other vegetation, including flowers. Koala droppings don't smell unpleasant. Fresh droppings crumble easily and smell of eucalyptus oil. What else did we find? Actually, finding koalas is quite difficult. They're very unpredictable. Now, I talked earlier how there are only a couple of records a year. I'm not casting nasturtiums at anybody here because I've spent more time in Heathcote National Park than um, most people, and I've never seen them neither. Well, one. And uh, so <laughs> unless you actually go looking for them, you don't see them. Grey gums are most often found growing on better quality soils, often in transition soils between sandstone and shale, and in damper areas along creek lines. All of these photos were taken in um, Heathcote National Park. Heathcote National Park and some nearby forests lower down in the Warrenora Valley are home to several stands of good quality grey gums. Since July 2021, Steve and friends have identified 65 individual koalas, and they estimate that there are at least 100 individuals in the area. Okay, so how did we identify our koalas? Well, we didn't try and catch them or anything, because that would require us to get all sorts of um, permissions and things, so we no radio collars, drones, sniffer dogs, whatever. We just walked around with a camera. And what we learnt in the early days, and I should say this, that Tom and I deliberately did not research koalas when we started looking, and the reason that we didn't is that we would have had confirmation bias. We would have basically gone out and tried to find what other people already knew, and um, we thought that probably wasn't good science. So we decided to go out, see what we could find and, and incrementally work it out from there. So we soon worked out that koala's nostrils are a bit like whale flukes, that the interface between the pink on the inner side of the nostril and the darker um, 
the greater part of their nose has a unique dividing line. So every single one of them, that interface between the light and dark is different. Now, some of them are dramatically different. Others give me hours of fun sitting, looking through Photoshop and whatever, trying to make sure that we're not looking at the same animal. Okay, here we've got a bird getting fur off a koala to put it on its nest. It's going off like a woodpecker. Koala doesn't seem all that bothered. Female uni student who put out some cameras to try and um, capture images of koalas moving up and down trees and found that 80% of them didn't come out of the tree. They just jumped into the next tree like a monkey. I mean, they can move, jump a couple of metres sideways and, you know, probably a metre downhill and quite happy. I also read that brains are cautioned against their skull because they routinely fall out of trees. And I'm not surprised when you see some of the places they roost. Recently listed as endangered, this is a good news story. To find such a large breeding colony living in a national park so close to Sydney. Now these koalas are part of the Southern Sydney koala population that extends to the water catchments in the south. Campbelltown in the west and the Georges River in the north. I understand that it's the only healthy, that is no chlamydia and other diseases and expanding population in New South Wales. Okay, just a few myths that they don't drink. In fact, I had an ABC reporter on the phone the other day and he said, they don't drink. And I said, they do. Despite their relatively small brain, they're not stupid. Threats to koalas are mainly from humans, in the form of habitat clearance and car strikes. Other threats are from bushfires and droughts. This colony is luckily in an area not threatened by habitat clearance, for housing or roads, and there are no busy public roads in the park where they might get hit by cars, such as now happens along Heathcote Road. I always thought they were pretty slow moving on the ground, but apparently they can outrun a dog and um, they can move 10 kilometres or more in a single night. And Jody's put up some new signs around the park because Heathcote is very popular with the neighbours for walking their dogs and trail bikes and mountain bikes or whatever. So Jody's organised some nice new metal signs and they're very good, very um, not batting you over the head, it's just gently reminding you of your obligations and the fact that there are things there that you haven't seen. Seyfod's our model for Jody's sign and one of the few times I've seen a koala right out in the open. People would say, oh yeah, my friend saw one behind Sutherland Cemetery, yep, there's, there's koalas there, yep. Forbes Creek, Prince Edward Park. Last week I found... Um, Last two weeks, I found four koalas near the needles behind Ingerdine um, and evidence that there are probably more there. Look, if you don't go looking, you will not see them. So, next time you're looking for somewhere to exercise, why not try Heathcote National Park and keep an eye out for a koala or two? <laughs> <laughs>